Hi there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Jazz Piano Fundamentals, book one, book number two, and playing solo jazz piano. And today, you know, I don't like to go negative, but today, um, I, I've had a bunch of students and people contacted me, uh, YouTube comments, talking about cocktail piano and how it's different from jazz piano. And it's kind of strange to me. Um, so I'm trying to piece together what people mean. And it's strange to me largely because, you know, cocktail piano, background piano is usually just played by jazz pianists. <laughs> um, and so I, you know, it usually sounds kind of like jazz. But there is kind of a stereotypical style that goes with cocktail piano. Um, and I want to show you kind of what it is and why I think it's kind of BS compared to actual real jazz piano. <laughs> um, and it's probably clear already, but let me just say, of course, this is a stereotype. This is not by any means every background pianist. You know, some of the great jazz pianists served a lot of time playing at hotel bars. Dave McKenna is a great example. So there's certainly lots of great people playing in all kinds of different settings. But I just want to show you kind of the worst stereotype of a cocktail pianist and show you how a jazz pianist is different. And um, what I'm going to show you, I hope, is two main points. One is pedal usage. And the second is directionality. And hopefully those two things will become clear. Pedal usage is probably already clear as I demonstrate. So I, I chose this tune. I can't get started. Um, and let's see, maybe that's not the best view. So if you've never heard this tune, let me just give you kind of a basic version. Cannonball Adderley version of this, lots of, lots of great versions. So the stereotype of cocktail piano, first of all, is that it's rarely played in time. Like the really stereotypical cocktail piano is always going to be rubato. And in jazz, we sometimes play rubato as well. So I'm going to do my worst cocktail pianist uh, impression of this. So maybe that would be a stereotypical cocktail pianist version. Whereas if I was going to play it rubato as a jazz pianist, maybe it would be... So what do they have in common? They're both really colorful, right? They both are using lots of extensions, lots of the piano, right? They're using the whole instrument, lots of alterations on the dominant chords. Um, they're both rubato, they're both really free flowing with the time. What are they, what's different about them? So first of all, and I didn't mention this earlier, but I feel like probably the best cocktail pianists really care about the melody. Um, really all jazz pianists need to care about the melody. And one of the things that I was doing in the cocktail piano version that I wasn't doing in the jazz piano version was that I was putting all of these weird pauses in the melody to do all of this frilly piano stuff, right? <laughs> right? Nobody, of course, would sing it like that. Da-da-da-da. Da da, da da da. I can't remember the lyric right now. I apologize. Um, so, whether you're playing cocktail piano or jazz piano, I would recommend thinking in melodic phrases. And then you 
you can fill. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean you can't ever get a little bit creative about uh, where you're going to put in some extra material or how you're going to divide up the melody, but it's just, in general, we want to think like a singer, right? Sometimes singers do, you know, make an unusual choice to pause in the middle of a phrase, but we want that to all be intentional, okay? So that's number one. Second thing is that within these, you know, fills, in my stereotypical off the cocktail pianist version, I was just holding down the pedal the entire time. And so it becomes this big, um, you know, tapestry of sound. And it kind of makes sense that, you know, <laughs> if you're playing background piano and you, you're just trying to fill the space, it's logical. <laughs> And back in the day, when I saw a cocktail pianist, I was really impressed. I was like, Te technique? What's that technique? It's, you know, it's unbelievable. They're all over the piano. But now what I kind of realize is that they're just going hand over hand, playing the same thing in multiple octaves. Again, not every cocktail piano, it's just the bad ones. Sounds fine. Um, and your technique doesn't have to be that good when you're covering it up with a lot of pedal. Right? So in the jazz pianist version, one of the things that I was doing is I was lifting the pedal a heck of a lot more, even if I was also doing an arpeggio. You know, that's still an arpeggio. But now I'm not playing. I'm playing. And now my technique has to be a little bit better because you can hear whether it's even. And I hope you don't listen too closely because I need to practice. So certainly jazz pianists use pedal, especially if we're playing a rubato ballad, but we're lifting the pedal a lot, and we're also trying to find some moments where we can offer some clarity. Um, I always think about this Oscar Peterson version of someone, someone to watch over me, where he plays. you know, virtuosic content between the melodic phrases, he's leaving that pedal out and he's playing not, he's not playing. Right, that would be really a lot of sound. He's playing. Okay. So first thing was melodic phrases. The second thing was pedaling. And the third thing, which is maybe the hardest to understand and explain, but I'll do my best, is directionality. Okay, so your stereotypical bad cocktail pianist will basically just play a vertical expression of the chord for each chord. So C major, A minor, D minor, G7. Okay, they probably wouldn't do it every single chord, but that's kind of the vibe as I'm on C. A, D, etc. Good jazz pianists are thinking much less about expressing the current chord, although we do that, certainly, but we're thinking a lot more about leading in to the next chord. And so one of the things that I notice in good jazz pianists is that when they do some sort of a fill or interlude or cadenza like whatever, there's some sort of a connection into the next phrase. And it could be a harmonic connection. It could be that they're playing the five chord of the next chord, you know. Um, that wasn't really effective, but uh, you get the idea. It could be a bass connection. It 
could be even a connection to the melody. So, you know, good pianos, whether you're a cocktail pianist or a jazz pianist, and like I said, they're mainly the same thing. Um, good pianists think like arrangers. How am I going to, um, you know, add an element in here that's going to connect between these sections rather than how am I going to kind of express this chord, express this chord, express this chord. Um, and so I hope that um, this little list, melody, pedal, connection, whatever kind of playing piano uh, you're playing, if you're playing a rubato ballad, these are three really good points um, to think about. These are three points that are going to separate a very mediocre sounding pianist from a very good sounding pianist. If you can get those three elements down, you're going to be sounding more sophisticated regardless of what style you're playing. All right, folks. So that was my takedown, massive takedown of cocktail pianists. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, check out my books. You can get them from jeremysiskin.com. Um, you'll enjoy them. And since we're talking about cocktails, uh, why don't you comment with uh, pour me a martini, please, if, uh, or something of that sort. Get creative with it if you've made it all the way here. Thanks for watching, everyone.